Hey everyone, Catch em All Collectibles here. And today I have some pretty decent cards to to show off and have a little discussion around. Um, these cards are interesting in that I've had them for a decent bit of time, a year or two or more on most of them, yet they've not been listed anywhere. I, I've posted most of them, maybe all of them on my Instagram at one point or another, but some people ask me on occasion, like, what do you collect? What's in your collection? The way that I'm structured as an S corporation, I do this as a business now full time, even though when I acquired these, like I, I wasn't doing this full time at the time I acquired these. I've always had them kind of set back and not really keen to sell because cards like these are a lot harder to come by and replace. Uh, a lot of what I do business in they're cards that pass through my hands multiple times in multiple grades and, and they're things that I can replenish reasonably down the line. Anyone unfamiliar, everything on the front row, second row, and then this card here, they're all the Art Academy cards from 2015. Unfortunately, like I was around in 2015 when this went on, but unfortunately when they were selling for like a a hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks a card. I wasn't picking them up. I picked a lot of these up maybe two years or so ago in the low four figure range. And like this one, Scott recently consigned and sold on his channel for or his eBay. I think it went for around twelve. And then Rusty, a couple of weeks later, had one pass through him on consignment for around eight thousand. So when a card like that doesn't come up for auction for a really long time, a lot of times the first copy will go fairly high and then the next one will retrace from there a bit. This card, I, I this is my only one right now. I auctioned one off uh, in December through PWCC. It went for, I, I believe it was 6,600. Maybe that was, I, I had three at one point and I sold one for 6,600. Maybe the PWCC one went for seven or eight or so. But all these other ones... And then even that one, like I only have the one copy, no spares. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is how do you price something that if and when it sells, you'll likely not own it again. Um, it is a difficult thing in some ways, but my my way of thinking on these cards is that I own them now. I love them. I appreciate them for what they are. Sadly, given the value of these, like I, I don't keep these on hand. I don't even get to look at them very often at all. Certain cards of this caliber I have in the PWCC vault, which I could never see. These ones I keep in a, in a safe deposit box at a bank near me. Um, so I can, I mean, I can visit them. <laughs> I have visitation rights whenever I want to go in during business hours and go grab them and take them home, make a video and then bring them back. But it's just something I don't do that often. So great cards. I love them. But in a way, I'm open to moving them for the right price to someone who, who might be able to appreciate them more and justify the expenditure more. To have this much money just locked up in a safe deposit box, not being productive towards my business. Like if I had a pile of, if I turn these into a pile of cash, I can buy collections to flip and sell and I can, I can make money with the money. But with these, they're sitting in a safe deposit box that I'm paying to store them in and insure them. So, but yeah, when it comes to pricing at the end of the day, I mean, with any of them, there, there's not a ton of copies out there. So you're not going to get, they're not as liquid. They're not as frequently sold as a PSA 9 based on limited Charizard. You're not going to have comps from two days ago necessarily. You're not going to have comps coming up every other day. All you can really do is look for the lowest listed on eBay. Look for the recent sold, if, if any have sold that you can find. And then figure out what you paid for them and what you want to get from. Likely knowing that oftentimes like you, you might not get it back cheaper. Maybe you sell it and prices go down and you're able to reacquire it for cheaper. But like anytime I sell a card like this, I never, I never have that in mind. I, do, I don't sell them with, oh, hey, maybe the price will tank 50%. And it absolutely might, but you might have a bad time if you, if you sell it banking on that and then it never does that 50% drop. But yeah, anyways, I, I just wanted to do a video while I had these. 
I, I've got another small stack of cards that I'm going to briefly pause and reset with. I guess I'll do that now before I talk, but I'm also going to clip into this. I'm actually going to list all of these. I, I don't, I'm not going to show you the process of listing all of them, but I'm going to I'm going to go over to the computer and I'm going to show you the prices that I listed these all and talk a little more on like what I paid for them, what I'd sell them for, and my thinking behind that. 99% of my inven- eBay inventory. I list as the cheapest on eBay. Some of these I might be the only listed on eBay, so whatever I list at, I'll be the cheapest. But cards like these are at times where I won't be the cheapest on eBay because like I don't need to sell it, and in many ways I don't want to sell it. <laughs> Someone needs to convince me to sell it. So yeah, I'm gonna pause and I'll be right back with uh, a decent little stack of cards to to show you. So we're back. For anyone unfamiliar with these cards, these are the full art number one, number two, number three, and number four trainer Pikachus, trophy Pikachus, full art Pikachus. There's a lot of different ways that people will describe them, but yeah, you can see the year. So from 2014 to 2019, I have the number one, I have the first year that this card was released. And then I also have the the last year because we've lost 2020 and 2021 worlds to the pandemic. But between 2014 and 2019, which is a six year span, each year, the top four placing competitors at worlds for both the trading card game and the video game have received these cards. So there's juniors, seniors, and masters And then as I said, there's trading card game and video game. So in 2014, there were six winners total. There was first place, masters, juniors, seniors, video game, first place, masters, seniors, juniors, trading card game. So yeah, each one of these by year, there's six total intended distribution. Are there extra copies potentially? The story behind each one of these is that I bought them from the winners. So, I mean, it's public information. You can go and you can look at who who the six individuals were, who won, who who the six individuals were in 2016 that got second place. I dealt with directly the winners in each of these. So I'm, I have no concern that these are extra copies specifically, but could be a thing. So I just want to say that given that they are, they've been awarded so far for six years, Six times six is 36. So theoretically, again, awarded intended distribution, there should be 36 arts of each one of these placements. And you can see that the art for third and fourth is the same. So I guess if you want to say it's 72 for each of these. So six by year by place, but then shared art across the years, it's 36, 36, and then like 72. Um, One thing that we don't know, London is intended to be as it was in 2020. It's intended to be in... 2022 in London. If London happens, we do not yet know whether or not the art will be the same. So the half art Pikachu, unfortunately, I own none of those, was awarded between 2004 and 2013, which was a 10 year span. And they were only awarded to trading card winners at that point, I believe, because I believe the number on the half arts is three for each. So they're in a way, given year, given placement, they're twice as rare, three copies compared to six, but those were awarded for 10 years. So there's 30 copies of each art across the 10 year span. As it stands, one thing that people have kind of assumed, generally speaking, is that these would be similarly distributed and awarded for 10 years. So six per year over a presumed 10 year span, We've always kind of assumed that there would be 60 of each of these. Now that we've lost some years to the pandemic, will they do an art change? Will it end at 36 instead of the the thought to be 60? It's very it will be very interesting to see how that um, plays out and and what ends up happening there. But yeah, I just wanted to give. uh, I don't think it's every day. There's definitely some videos out there on YouTube. Scott showed his off on YouTube. David Person showed his out on on YouTube. But I've uh, I've 
long intended to do one of these videos and since I had these out, I do intend to get them listed. I very much am fine never selling them, but the amount of value that some of these things have appreciated to, it's hard for me to not like at least have them out there if someone wants to really pay me well to to have them leave my collection. But as I record this, I'm actually recording this on the 13th of March. Again, I don't know when you'll see it exactly, but by the time you do, they will be listed on eBay. I will show you the price that I listed them for and, and discuss how I arrived at that number. Um, but yeah, these are the cards. The number three I've talked about, one of my like favorite cards in my collection. Honestly, like I love the one and two. I mean, I love the one because it's like it was the first full art Pikachu in 2014. It's obviously the winner, the world champion won this card. So it's great. But I bought one, two, and four from the winners over the internet through Facebook messages, through email. However, um, this one I bought on the ground floor two hours after it was awarded to the third place winner um, in Washington, D.C. So I I've mentioned that story before being in the room with him, him with all his buddies after having won it, all the energy, all the excitement, and then just, uh, yeah, being able to buy that off him. I obviously, I bought some people with trophies. They say, why would you want to buy someone else's achievement? I understand it to an extent. And I, I'm, I like these cards because of the history. I like these cards because of the, the rarity and the chase. But I completely understand that some people, it's just not for them. It's a lot of money. It's perfectly reasonable and fine to just decide that you don't want to buy someone else's trophy. But I can tell you, like, I remember his energy and his excitement that night that he won this. And even though the card left him, I'm very certain that he still has those memories as well. And he probably has the deck that he won with and he has the physical Pikachu trophy, likely. Maybe he sold it too. But again, the memories don't leave. This is just kind of like a a card that isn't playable in the game. Clearly someone who's winning one of these is very large into the card game aspect. They may not be collectors. So yeah, that's just a little bit of commentary around the, the conversations I see about buying other people's trophies. But historically speaking, I've been like a nine collector. So it's just, it worked out so well that all these graded PSA nine. I did at one point have a PSA 8.5 that I sold. Um, I have had, I had a raw number three years ago that I sold raw. It had a little bit of an issue somewhere on the card. I, I forget where, honestly, but then it, it ended up grading a nine from the person that I sold it to. So, but yeah, these are the cards. I wanted to show them off. It's the, this is the first time they've been, they've been home in over a year. They've been living in the, in the safe deposit box. So Unfortunately, they're going to have to go back into the the dark, cool storage, but <laughs> safer there. And I sleep better at night knowing that they're safer from theft and fire and, and, and that kind of consideration. And there are companies out there. One video I want to do down the line. I do have insurance policies on my inventory off site and on site. Um, there are companies out there that will ensure the contents of safe deposit boxes because maybe it's a thing at certain banks, but most banks, generally speaking, will not ensure the contents of a safe deposit box. So yeah, just a little bit of considerations uh, with cards of this caliber. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've got any specific questions, if you want to hear anything more on them. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. it. It's such a, such a great feeling to, to be sitting here looking at them. Cause like I said, it's, it's been quite a bit of time since I've had, um, this one you can see, I actually had in the PWCC vault for a short time because I did, uh, I did contemplate selling if, and when I do sell like for good, Part of me, I, I like the thought of selling four first because it is a duplicate art 
and the one two the one two three go to go very well together. You get one of each art. You get the top three placements: gold, silver, bronze. Uh, and so the four, if anything, will probably be priced slightly more competitively. To where if that one sold, I'd be fine. If the one or the two sells, I'm likely getting a lot more money for it. So I'll probably be able to get over it and deal with it if I'm selling one of those. The three, though, the three, if I have somebody approach me and just pay me like a really substantial amount of money for the whole set, it, it, if it came to the point where I couldn't like starve my business of that capital to, to just plow into the business or plow into my 401k investments, whatever. Um, but if I were to sell anything, like I could see a future where maybe these three get sold and I just keep this one forever. We'll have to see how it plays out. Um, part of me just wants to, that's why I want to get these things listed, get them out there and see what numbers come in. There's a lot of people with a lot deeper pockets than I have that, that might want to get into the trophy game. So I'll give them a shot if they want to send me a best offer and see what happens. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my full art one through four Pika collection that I've, I've teased a couple times in different podcasts. I don't know if anyone, I was surprised <laughs> Even though my background's terrible on YouTube, the uh, the Snorlax behind me and then the little uh, the little display to the left, a couple different random videos, and even like almost a year ago when I was filming in front of a shelf, I had this card in the background. In in both uh, configurations, and I got some like DMs saying, "Hey, I saw that card in the background," but I I don't think I ever got any public comments on YouTube little bit I mean I guess not that surprised that I don't get a ton of views but I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while so here it is whenever you're seeing this here it is so with that I am going to cut the video here you will no longer see these beauties by the time you see this they'll be back in their uh, nice safe little dark box that they live in hey everyone so i just wanted to record a quick outro i originally intended to combine into one video showing off the cards and then showing how i was going to be listing them check back tomorrow i decided to split it into two videos pretty bad at the whole youtube thing still almost a year into it now but trying to get to where my videos are a little bit more concise closer to that 10 to 20 minute range that YouTube tends to like. So yeah, check back tomorrow if you want to see the active listings on eBay. They're actually scheduled to go live shortly after the YouTube video drops. So they won't yet be active if you watch them right out of the gate, but they'll be up fairly soon. Um, and there was just one thing I've, I've got notes here. There's one thing I wanted to correct. When I was talking about the half arts, I mentioned that there was 30 copies. There's actually 33 copies of each because interestingly in 2013, the final year that the half arts were released, they started not only awarding them to the TCG winners, but they awarded them to the video game winners as well. I mentioned earlier about how there was six each year of the full arts because they went to both VGC and TCG. Whereas the first nine years of the half arts, they were awarded to TCG only. And then so you had nine years, three copies each, 27. And then you had the final year with six copies each. So 33. Interestingly as well, I have the full art one through four Pikachus for nine years of the half art Pikachu release. One to three was the only uh, awarded copies. So the number four didn't exist. When they started awarding them to the winner of the... Um, video game they also added on a fourth place which similar to the full art it's a it's a duplicate art of the third kind of the pikachu holding up the bronze bronze trophy so interestingly 33 copies of each of the one through three but the the fourth place copy was only awarded in 2013 so there would be just six copies of each of those you would have masters seniors juniors of both trading card game and video game 
each receiving the fourth place finishers only. So yeah, that's a little interesting tidbit that I just wanted to correct a couple days later here. I'm recording this part for the outro. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Um, definitely check back tomorrow. If you're interested in hearing me further talk about the cards, you won't get to see them. Um, unfortunately, just the little, the little eBay thumbnails of them, <laughs> but I will discuss cost basis on the ones that I'm able to. Um, sometimes sellers are, they ask that private deals remain private. So I, I always respect that. Um, but where I bought things publicly, where I bought them privately, and the seller was fine with me sharing them, I will be as transparent as possible, as I always try to do on this channel. So as always, I really appreciate you all watching. Great time to be dropping these videos with, with the one year. We got the podcast coming up in a few days, the 27th episode. And then this Saturday, I'll be live on YouTube, um, 9 or 9.30 p.m. Eastern. So really exciting week, a lot of big things going on, busy as ever in the business. So yeah, thanks again. I will catch you all later.